Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I was taking a trip back through memory lane the last 24 hours after listening to that group, UTFO, Untouchable Force Organization, and their Roxanne Roxanne with Mr. Kango Kid, who passed away a couple of years ago, and I just, I knew, but I didn't know, but the educated rapper, many of you guys would know if you know about UTFO, the educated rapper, and Roxanne, Roxanne, and several other songs. Very talented lyricist, also passed away. Both died of cancer at 54 years old, even though they, one was older than the other, both at 54 years old. Now imagine that. Two rappers of the same rap group, both dying of cancer at 54? What are the chances? So, but it brought back a lot of memories because... I remember that time period. Sorry, when Roxanne Roxanne came out, many of you know what I'm talking about. 1983, 1984, we can't get those years back. I mean, you talk about a perfect time. For me, father had passed away, but right after that, everything was okay. Things didn't get bad until the 90s. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Nostalgia. What can you do with it? What can't you do with it? Let's talk for a second, shall we? The culmination of everything that the God that I serve has helped me to help you understand. We know that they got rid of gold in 1933. We have the congressional records. We have the acts of Congress. We have the words of Congress. We have the statutes. We know that they replaced gold with a new type of gold known as notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers acceptances, trade acceptances, and government obligations. Congress's own words. However, what you didn't know is that when you apply for a loan, the bank tells you, okay, we're going to submit this for approval. And then you wait for them to tell you they, the loan has been approved. Pay attention. You wait for the local Federal Reserve agent, or Bank of America, Wells Fargo, any of those banks you apply for a loan through, you wait for them to tell you that they've received approval. Don't matter whom they claim and they're getting approval from. And once they get approval, say, you can go get a home. So that means your loan was approved. And you were supposed to receive Federal Reserve notes. But go look at the Truth in Lending Act statement. You did not receive Federal Reserve notes. That's the first thing. You applied for Federal Reserve notes, but you didn't receive that. You received credits, and it's a provisional credit that they extend to the previous owner of the property. Now, hold on. Remember, they are extending credit. They're not extending Federal Reserve notes, but you applied for Federal Reserve notes, right? You never got those Federal Reserve notes because the local Federal Reserve agent got them. You received credits, so that's your offset, people. Federal Reserve, uh, local agent got what they were supposed to get. And the previous homeowner got what they were supposed to get. Remember, your promissory note was the collateral security. Now, if you want to put all this together, go back, reread section 412 and 414 of the Banking Act, which is codified under the Federal Reserve Title 12. See, that's supposed to be the codification of the Banking Acts of Congress is Title 12. See how simple that is? That's how you go into court and say, oh no, they receive Federal Reserve notes. I receive credits. And that's the offset. So they extended credits to me and receive Federal Reserve notes in return. Well, who pays back the Federal Reserve? The promissory note pays back the Federal Reserve. They get that back from the Treasury. That's the way the law is set up. And I'm not here. I don't care about who, who pays them back. That's not my concern. I have done what I was supposed to do. The law says that I was supposed to give them the promissory note as collateral security. I did that. It said they were supposed to receive Federal Reserve notes from the Federal Reserve. When they sent that to the Federal Reserve, they told me it was approved. That means they sent it to the Federal Reserve. That's the end of the conversation. What are we talking about now? Oh, no. Shut up. Ah, 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 no, no, ah, no, no, ah, ah. Shut up. That deal is over. There is nothing you can say. You can't say anything to me that will change the facts. 
So if you're going to talk, you better support it by facts and don't just support it by words. Show me documentation that what I just said ain't what it's supposed to be. They can't. Why not? Because contracts work this way. Value and consideration. You received consideration, provisional credits. The bank receives from the Federal Reserve, Title 12, Section 414. They receive Federal Reserve notes. That's the value. But you also tendered the collateral security backing your end of the deal. Do you know that at the end and completion of all of that, they're supposed to return your promissory note? Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, because the promissory note acted as collateral until they received the Federal Reserve notes. When the loan was approved and they received the Federal Reserve notes, you're supposed to receive that collateral back. Remember, it was only securing the transaction. The transaction was complete. Once the Federal Reserve notes were received and the promissory note was received, do you have to pay anything back? There is no money. What are you paying back? Excuse me. There is no money. What are you paying back? So give them back the credits if they want the credits. So do a 1099-C and 1099-A against that local Federal Reserve agent for not telling you they got those Federal Reserve notes and give them back their credits. Say, here, here's your credits back, mother. And a 15% addition to satisfy anything you might be claiming bye-bye adios sarna give me back my promissory note mother that's what people should be saying now look i know i'm not doing a lot of details here i know i'm just explaining it and some of you are going to get it some of you are not going to get this why because i can't think like you okay i cannot explain it from the smallest participle of a participle, of a particle, okay? I can't do that. That is not, I am not capable of doing that no matter how hard I try because I've been doing this too long. So I would have to go back to when I began and try to get that understanding again. That is not possible for me. My mind doesn't think that way. Look, just like you, when you're talking to a five-year-old, you have to get down to a five-year-old's level. When you're talking to a teenager, you have to get down to a teenager's level. Well, all of you are adults, but not all of you think along the same line. So that means I can't get down to all of your levels. There's too many of you. Okay? I don't have that capability. But what I can do is I can tell you, go back over the videos, listen to them until you understand them. The words are not going to change. The information is not going to change. See, that's the unique thing about information. Information doesn't change. Oh, information develops over time. Not the truth. If it's the truth, it doesn't change. The truth is always going to be the truth. The truth is always going to be the truth. Look, I just talked about Kango Kid, Mr. Haitian Kango Kid. And I now see, despite the fact that everybody says they're just now finding out he was Haitian, you know, in the 90s and everything, uh, it was already known. He wasn't hiding that at the time. But anyway, Kango and mr jeffrey campbell mr educated rapper many of their fans were talking about their rocking the bells in heaven first of all rocking the bells that's ll cool j and to find out that ll and mr kango were friends and all of that but everybody has this belief in heaven but they don't tell you what you do when you get to heaven you're gonna be playing harps you can only play a harp for so long people until that gets boring so come on now, what else they gonna be doing? Walking on streets paved in gold? Why they need to be walking on streets paved in gold in heaven? What 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 what's gold got to do in heaven? Gold don't have no value in heaven. I I know. See, I know it's symbolic. <laughs> when the Bible speaks about the heaven the streets and all that in gold and the the twelve gates and all of that, Revelation the twenty second chapter. I know that that's symbolic, and I know that it has nothing to do with grandma going to heaven. Okay, but that's what people do. They take bits and pieces of the... Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to say and then let y'all go. Have you ever heard that God is not a respecter of man? That, that he's not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of men. Ladies and gentlemen, they never finished the sentence. 
Not a respecter means he's not partial to any person. He he does not take one person over the other. You're not better than your grandmama, and your grandmama's not better than you in his eyes. But the rest of it says, the person who does his will is acceptable to him. So if you do what he's asking, then you are an acceptable person to him. They never finish that. They never finish the fact that he is not a respecter of a person so long as they do his will. Now he will now judge you against the person doing his will, the person doing and the person not doing. But they never explain that. They just take part of it and they run and they go for a full marathon without any water or any supplies or anybody cheering them on. They just keep running. So what I'm suggesting, ladies and gentlemen, the information I provided you regarding this proving that there is no money and that you don't owe anything on these loans, whether a student loan, a home loan, or a auto loan, when done through one of those financial institutions, I didn't give you all the fluff. I gave you from beginning to end and to beginning. In other words, I gave you the complete picture. You're just going to have to go back and listen. What did he say? That wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. Let him who has an ear listen. Listen. So you're going to have to go back and listen with an ear of understanding and not just listening to words. And that's what some of you have not been able to train yourself to do. The videos come with music, they come with antics, they come with distractions, they come with conversations that's off subject many times on purpose. Because if you can get past all of that and focus on the context and subject matter, man, you'll be, you'll be amazed at what you know. So you won't just walk the walk, but you'll be talking the talk. Why? Because you will know how to talk to the idiots who want to challenge you and ask you questions. You will also know that when you put something before the court, the court's going to want to challenge you by asking questions. You're going to have to learn how to take the question and turn it back around on them. So for instance, who gets the money? If, if, if the bank gets the Federal Reserve notes and the previous homeowner gets the monies for the house, then what's your responsibility? What's your liability? Excuse me. What's that got to do with anything? No, no, let's do the law. The law says that I gave a promissory note and that's collateral security. So that would, by law, be my contribution. Why would I be concerned about anything other than the bank getting their money and knowing that I have a Truth and Lending Act statement showing that they gave a provisional credit on my behalf to the, pay attention, previous homeowner? Because I gave the promissory note, those Federal Reserve notes are supposed to come to me. That's supposed to be the completion of the deal. But because I signed an irrevocable or irrevocable power of attorney, then it goes to the local Federal Reserve agent, and they assume those responsibilities. Go back and look at that Federal Reserve Operating Circular number 10, Appendix number B, if you need further clarification. But you're asking me questions, you should be asking them, because I gave them power of attorney. So they're supposed to know that. Why are you asking me this question when you already know the answer? The answer is spelled out in statute. Just that simple. By the way, Section 414, <laughs> that junk has not been amended. Go ahead, go look at the 1913 Act, then the amendment, 1935, nothing changed. Go ahead and go take a look. It hasn't been amended since. It hasn't been amended, it hasn't been amended since. It said the same thing from the very beginning, that they're supposed to give the Federal Reserve notes to the Federal Reserve agent on application of a Federal Reserve loan. It took one person, thank you, Jehovah, for giving me the understanding that any was the word to focus on in the statute. Go ahead. Go back and take a look at Title 12, Section 412, and now focus on any as meaning any bank and see if you don't understand it better. Hey, I got to go. 15 minutes is enough.